Soprano Sochelle Beck has performed across stages in North America and Germany in such roles as Musetta in La Boheme, Pamina in Die Zauberflöte, Nayade in Ariadne auf Naxos, and in the premiere of the one-woman opera, Elaine. We met performing during the run of The Phantom of the Opera in Hamburg and have gone on to collaborate together on Opera on Tap Hamburg and creative operations. We sat down for tea to discuss opera, Alice, and our new video, Home. So hello, and today we are sitting down with co-founder of Creative Operations and our very own Alice in Alice in Wonderland, Sochelle Beck. Hello. (laughs) Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you. It's funny um, interviewing you because we're always working together, so it's kind of a, a strange role to be in today, but I thought it would be nice to sit down and have everybody learn a little bit more about you and also how you see the role of Alice and, yeah, just lots of fun stuff. So. Yeah, nice. What I thought was so interesting is I didn't realize that you started out in theater and then later switched to opera. And I just wanted to know what made you change paths to become an opera singer? Yeah, so, well, (laughs) I didn't know much about opera growing up. I mean, I went to go see classical concerts with my aunt and with my grandma a lot, Um, you know, in the park or, even at Disney Hall in LA, we would go there sometimes. Um, But I didn't really know a whole lot (laughs) about opera. And so the path that I went was through the musical theater path. There was um, a musical theater group in my city that uh, was separate from school because my school also didn't really have a musical theater program. Um, And I like begged my mom to pay for me to go and <laughs> take part in this uh, musical theater program, which I did for a couple years. And um, then I started taking music classes and I uh, got annoyed with the choices of my voice teachers, basically. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I'm not really liking these songs that you're choosing. And he's like, well, why don't you just go buy a CD and listen to some stuff and tell me what you want to sing? I was like, hmm. Sounds like a good idea. So I bought um, a Renee Fleming CD, uh, A Beautiful Voice or The Beautiful Voice. I'm not sure. And um, yeah, it's it's the same uh, name as her book. And then I bought a, a soprano aria CD. And one of the songs on there was uh, Sumi Jo singing the Queen of the Night, the De Hülle Rache um, from, from the magic flute. And I loved it. Um, I came to my voice teacher and told him and he said, Oh, do you want to try it? And then I realized I'm not really that kind of soprano to get those really, really, really high notes. I can sing high, but (laughs) that's just like one note out of my range, unfortunately. So I've done Pamina twice. So there's something. Um, and then actually once moving here, I sort of found my musical theater feet again and, uh, you know, doing opera, uh, doing the Phantom of the Opera in Hamburg with you and also doing this, um, world, world of musicals tour that I, that I did last year, which was a lot of fun. And I like trying to find the, um, my style, which seems to be, what I'm most comfortable is kind of like in between the two, not fully, fully opera, although I can, and also not fully, fully musical theater, although I can. (laughs) But what I really like to do is this sort of in between, which is exactly what uh, Brooke wrote Alice for. Yeah, it's that that classical (laughs) classical crossover. And I agree. I think you really shine. Like you can do both and you can do both well. But whenever I hear you in that kind of realm, I go, oh, it's like something just kind of goes into gear and you get really excited. But my question is, so you were in school, you were doing musical theater stuff first, but what made you- Not in school. Oh, yes. Well, um, one, because 
I didn't have to dance. That was the biggest thing. Okay. Or not the biggest thing, but a big thing. I grew up listening to classical music, so I'm very familiar with the style, let's say, okay. even though I didn't really listen to that much opera. Um, and the storytelling, actually. Mm-hmm. Although musical theater obviously has a lot of storytelling, um, I liked that that opera was basically like straight theater mm-hmm. and singing yeah. and just put together All without combined. the dancing. Without the tap. Element. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. I was just surprised that he said, find music you like. And you were like, okay, Renee Fleming and Sumi Joe. Like you weren't going to the best of Audra McDonald. So I was kind of wondering how you, is that all from the concerts or is that just what you gravitated to? Um, I guess because we were studying, there, there were kind of two choices at my school. Some of it had to do with the school. And it was like, either you're going more in the classical direction or jazz. Oh, okay. And I was in jazz group as mm-hmm. well. And I, I played with the idea of doing that, um, but ended up going the, the opera route, mostly because of the high notes, I think. Yeah, you like the challenge of that because I, I think people who love to do opera, it's because, as you said, it's like high theater. It's like the hardest singing the stage, the costumes, everything is like full volume and it's just a lot of fun to be be part of. Full power. Yeah, the power, exactly. What was the first opera you saw? Because you went to a lot of concerts, but what was the actual first opera you saw? It was Don Giovanni um, with uh, Erwin Schrott. And I went to go see that. I had a student pass, so I was like sitting in the third row or something for... Twenty dollars or something like that. Right. The student yeah. tickets are <laughs> really good, and I went and saw that three times because I was just so amazed by it. I mean, you know, the overture in the beginning of Don Giovanni is just like <laughs> with the timpani and stuff, and I just didn't. I never thought of Mozart as being that way, mm-hmm. and I don't know, just like the sound overwhelmed me. Yeah, that's a pretty. Epic- and he's a great actor. Yeah, well, yeah, he is. And that's a pretty epic opera. Uh, my favorite is always the very last scene. No spoilers here, but it's a pretty epic, <laughs> pretty epic last scene in Don Giovanni. So I guess I don't need to ask what your favorite favorite opera is, but I do want to ask, um, what's your favorite role that you've performed so far? Um, I think that would have to be Musetta. Okay. She doesn't have a, a ridiculous amount of singing, but she's just, she's so fiery. <laughs> what she does sing, um, she means, and like she's doing it for a reason, not to say that er- other characters don't, but she's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The range is also really good for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. The um, Her character, even though she's like flashy and showy, um, she's actually a very authentic person. You know, she she says and does what she means, which you don't you don't meet a lot of people like that. So I think that's an interesting uh, side to to Musetta. Is there a role yeah. that you'd like to perform that you haven't yet in the future? Yes, I would love. I mean, Romeo and Juliet is probably it's one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. I was also in the Shakespeare Club in high school. <laughs> I was vice president. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, Romeo and Julia is just, I love all forms of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Gounod, Romeo et Juliette, is one of my favorite operas. Don Giovanni also. Um, and La Traviata. Those are probably my three tops. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would love to sing her the music is just it's lush and gorgeous but she also gets some showy things that she gets to sing um unfortunately it's not done that often here in Germany I don't understand that but I don't know (laughs) they do Carmen that's like the big French one (laughs) that happens here yeah they don't do a lot of French uh opera I mean in general I don't think they do a lot of opera even in the United States yeah um, but there are like Romeo and Juliet or, um, Faust or, um, oh, love Faust or Cendrillon. I don't know why that isn't performed. Oh, so I played Prince Charming. <laughs> I did. That was my first, that was my first opera role. It was Prince Charming. 
It was Prince Charming, yeah. Because actually in the in the libretto, um, it calls for a, oh, what is it called? Um, a falcon soprano, I think mm -hmm. they call it. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's meant to be a soprano with sort of a darker color. And especially when I was first finding my opera sound, it was a, it was a little bit darker and I had a solid middle. Mm -hmm. So I was Prince Charming, you know, strapped me down and <laughs> put a beard on me. Oh, you had a beard? Oh, I need to see these. Well, a little bit of stubble. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll send you some pictures. Maybe oh, we can add them. They're fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's cool. a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So like you mentioned that, uh, and this was actually, you know, before the pandemic hit, you were on tour with the world of musicals and having a lot of fun. They had their Christmas show and then they had their big Broadway show that you were uh, starting out with. And then unfortunately with COVID, everything closed down, but hopefully, you know, in the near future, things can get up and running again. What do you miss most about being out on the road? Um, well, performing every day or almost every day, it, we had some weeks, six shows, mm -hmm. which, which is a lot <laughs> and some weeks, four shows, but I mean, it kind of felt like every day with maybe a couple of days off, um, here and there, I miss honing my craft. Mm -hmm. Um, not to say that I can't do it when I'm in my living room, but it just has a different feeling there's a different amount of um sharing also uh it's really about i think just singing every day being on stage there's a different skill set that you need than just practicing by yourself and i really miss that yeah um being on the road specifically it was a lot of fun for like the first month or so but you know after a while you're kind of like i wouldn't mind having my own bed and yeah. <laughs> all of that. The only thing is, um, I will say is that being on tour, you don't have a chance to get distracted by things in your everyday life. So when you're on tour, you are on tour mm -hmm. and you really don't make a lot of space for, for other things, which can be really good for concentration and, um, again, honing your craft and, uh, honing your craft. That's yeah. And awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I think just when you focus. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no, but um, I've never been on tour. I don't particularly think I'd enjoy being on tour, but because uh, I like my own bed too. Um, yeah. I do know that from from when we did Phantom, you were doing the eight shows a week, you know, so tour you're doing mm. four to six shows a week. Um, it does put you in a different mental game when you're performing because sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves when it's just one show. Yeah shows or five shows. And when you're doing it in that rhythm, um, you can really build a performance, you know, and just kind of layer on. And uh, that's a luxury when you get to perform something as often as you would uh, in something like the Phantom of the Opera or, or on tour. So I totally, totally agree with you on that. Um, yeah. Switching gears a little bit. So we're going to get into Alice in Wonderland. And I was wondering, mm -hmm. what was your first introduction to the story of Alice in Wonderland? You know, I don't remember having an introduction mm -hmm. to Alice in Wonderland. I just feel like it was always around me. It was always a story that I that I grew up knowing. I mean, I obviously saw the Disney mm -hmm. um, movie at some point, but it also wasn't like my favorite movie but I remember loving the story and loving how how weird some of it is yeah <laughs> and how magical how magical it is um yeah so I don't have a specific memory of of Alice in Wonderland yeah as an introduction it's true though, I think for us as Americans, because we did the videos in, in Germany and we were dealing with um, an international cast for our videos, people who hadn't grown up with the story, they were more uh, familiar with the more recent Tim Burton movies. And so they were kind of coming at it from a, a different standpoint. And for us, it's kind of like a part of pop culture. We can't remember a time yeah. when there wasn't a reference to something Alice in Wonderland. Um, it's just, yeah, you see it. You I see mean, it. the Cheshire Cat has always been around, right? It's always been around, or the Mad Hatter. I mean, there's these like 
there are so many iconic characters that have just kind of worked mm. their way into everyday American pop culture. So it's really interesting. Um, that being said, do you like, what's your view on Alice? You know, how do you view her as a character? What's your take? She is very, very curious <laughs> for lack of a better word. I mean, she is intelligent. She asks a lot of questions and she's adventurous. I would say, I mean, who else would go on an adventure just following a rabbit, you yes. know? Um, so I think she, she's more in the scientific, uh, thinkers realm because she wants to ask, ask questions. And if she doesn't get the answer that she, or if she doesn't get the answer, then she'll go somewhere else and try and find it. Yeah, no, it's true. And I read yeah. something recently that I thought was really interesting after having reread the books is that. In the stories, Alice is, as you said, she's trying to figure everything out. She's asking the questions and she's not getting the answers. And ultimately, she has to get the answers from herself. Ultimately, she has to go back, figure it out herself. So it's kind of this um, philosophical, uh, esoteric kind of, you know, trying to figure out, like, does this all actually exist or is this just Alice, you know, wrestling with these questions in her mind and, and having to be more self-reliant? What is life? Exactly. <laughs> no, I feel like that was like the early, early, I don't know. How old is she supposed to be? 10? Maybe, maybe. I forget Something how like that. that happens. Yeah. Uh, the first, what is life question? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Is Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, but it is interesting how you can you can take that story on so many different different layers. It can be just a colorful adventure or you can dive deeper into the psychology behind it. So it's just um, yeah, it's very interesting. And do you think that she's like quirky or do you think that just everything around her is crazy or do you think she's kind of, you know, not of her time, maybe a little forward thinking? Oh, definitely forward thinking. I mean, quirky maybe in the in the best way. <laughs> um, curious. I mean, just uh, there's another word that I had for it, but now I forgot. Inquisitive. <laughs> inquisitive. Yeah, no, she's very inquisitive. inquisitive. Yeah. So you enjoy you enjoy playing her and kind of stepping into those shoes and trying to explore things for the first time. I relate to that because I was definitely that why kid <laughs> when I was younger. Why? I said it to my brother recently because he has uh, two little boys now and he's like, oh, he's in the why phase. I was like, you remember mine, right? It went on for a long time. <laughs> but why? <laughs> I totally relate to her. <laughs> it's like, but why is it this way? <laughs> um. So this month we're we're showing the video home. Um, do you have any any special memories or favorite moments from the day that we shot the video? Yeah, definitely. Um, I liked. Uh, be, I mean, being on the bridge yeah. when all those people were trying to they were trying to get by. I mean, it was a really beautiful day. So there were joggers out. There were people walking their dogs, and we had to have Sarah and and Tom on either side, like. Saying, can you just can you wait like a second so we can film this? <laughs> you know, the jockers were just like jogging in place. <laughs> but it was a really beautiful day. It was cold. Yeah. It was very cold, especially like the first um, first couple hours that we were there. Um, every time we stopped filming, I had to put on a coat because it was just it was chilly. Yeah. Um, but it was beautiful. Yeah. And let's see. Oh, and when Tom had to shake the bush for yeah. the Tom, Tom had for a the rabbit. Yes, he, Tom is our uncredited rabbit in in <laughs> in the video. He was our production assistant for the day. Had a lot of fun using and catching the drone. Um, and then later we yes. made him like go in the bush and like <laughs> shake as the rabbit. <laughs> There were, he had fun with that. He had a lot of fun with that. We have various bunny takes <laughs> that go from like aggressive <laughs> rabbit to just slight little bunny action. So uh, 
<laughs> and you were you were like, oh no, I think that's too much. Can you can you just like shake it a little less? Because the first time it was like, <laughs> it was like rabbit. monster rabbit. Yes. So I don't I don't think he's that aggressive. <laughs> but yeah, no, a lot of fun. But yeah, you it was to get the right force. The right force. Yeah, definitely. But um, but yeah, no, it was we lucked out because, you know, again, it was supposed to rain the whole entire day. And then we decided we were going to just, you know, make the best of it. And, um, you know, thankfully, there were just, you know, again, a few passing showers, but especially in the morning, it was cold. And we were like on that blanket. And I know your legs were cramping. I know my legs were cramping because we were yeah. like, the whole time. And Sarah was like, Sarah but, posed us very beautifully, but it was like, yeah. <laughs> so, no, no chin a little bit up, no down. Okay. Now this way. <laughs> and it's like, then hold it and look really natural yeah. and mouth your words. <laughs> yeah. Got it. No problem. No problem. <laughs> totally easy to do. But I'm so grateful for that because it looks great. It was not comfortable to it do. Sure it sure does. But it but it looks great. I'm I'm so happy that she was there because sitting can be so especially sitting on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting in a chair is something a little bit different, although she would probably I mean she would obviously know how to sit in a chair very gracefully, but it's not quite as difficult as sitting on the ground gracefully. <laughs> Yeah, and just building the vignettes so that everything looks yeah. good. And then again, that juxtaposition of doing that and making it making it look natural. But she was uh, such a pro and, and also like helping when there was a leg cramp or someone was cold or if we needed like a little, yeah. you know, uh, little help with, you know, repositioning re ourselves. Get some water. Yeah. In the snack, <laughs> snack trolley, but yeah, no, it was it was a really fun day, and um, yeah, it turned out I think better than any of us had originally thought, and so yeah, yeah a lot of fun memories there. Well, thank yeah. you for joining me thank for a little, little tea talk and going down memory lane with home, and uh, yeah, I mean we're going to be in touch anyway because we've got more things to plan and more projects in the future, more things to come. Exactly.